All right, welcome to the beginning of week three. Um, we're finishing up chapter 16. We're going to look at capacitance and capacitors. So I split this into three uh, smaller lectures. The first, just dealing with the general uh, concept of capacitors and parallel plate capacitors. Then we'll talk about combinations of capacitors. And then finally, the energy stored in a capacitor. And then what happens if instead of air or a vacuum in between the plates of a capacitor, if you put something called a dielectric, that's just a fancy name for an insulator, in between. All right, so the definition of capacitance. Capacitance is basically, if you look it up, the ability of a body to hold an electric charge. Just the capacity of an object to hold electric charge at a given voltage. You give the, the charge a certain amount, the charge is a certain amount of energy, and you can hold them in place. And basically, if you have a potential difference delta V, a voltage between two objects or two sides of an object, you get a charge buildup between the two objects, positive on, on one side and negative on the other. And that capacitance C, capital C, is the amount of charge per volt of difference. All right, so you hook up a battery, you have these plates. One, the, the charge gets pumped from one side to the other, so you have positive on one edge and negative on the other. This is basically a way of storing charge or uh, moving charges from one place to another. Um, I think in lab you're going to be dealing with you know, using these capacitors, and basically this is kind of a model for one. You have uh, these two um, plates that you can move. One has plus Q on the, on the side, the other has minus Q. You can move it a different distance apart. If they're close together, you can fit more charge in there because they're more likely to um, stay close together. If they're far apart, they're not really going to want to stay next to the other plus and minus charges. All right, so capacitance. So using our kind of fancy mathematical terms, capacitance is defined as, so the three arrows means it's defined as, the charge per volt. The amount of charge on an object uh, between two objects divided by the voltage. So the units of capacitance, so when I have these square brackets it means the units of. The units of capacitance are charge per volt, so coulombs per volt, C over V, which, it, which it we define as farads. So named after Michael Faraday. Um, I don't know why the last two letters of his last name didn't really make much difference, but that's where we are. So the farad, capital F, tells you how much capacity something has to hold electric charge. Um, he basically, Michael Faraday, used capacitors to, to store the excess electric charges that he built up by doing different experiments that he used in ex his experiments. He wanted to be able to store the electric charge. And so capacitance is named for him. But a 1 farad capacitor is usually a very, very big capacitance. So usually we'll have the, the uh, SI prefixes that you'll need to remember, micro, nano, and pico. All right, so the basic model of a parallel plate capacitor, this is mostly what we're going to use when we're talking about a capacitor, because most actual capacitors are modeled off of this. Uh, let's say you have two plates, and each has an area A, they're separated by some distance d. The capacitance, the amount of charge that they can hold up, depends only on uh, this constant epsilon zero, which we'll talk about here in just a moment, times the area of the charge divided by the distance between them, and that's it. Doesn't have anything to do with what type of material they're made of. Um, this is true. This epsilon zero means we're assuming there's nothing in between the two plates. So if there is something in between, we'll have to change it, but for now it'll be either be an air-filled or a um, vacuum-filled capacitor. So as it's going along there, so it just depends on the size and the distance between them. A lot of times, you know, instead of making a giant square, you'll roll them up or things like that to make them uh, fit in a smaller area, a smaller volume. So that constant epsilon zero, it's kind of a curvy E, it's called the permittivity of free space. 
big fancy term to see how much electric field is permitted in space before things start acting strangely. It has a value of 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulomb squared per newton meter squared. And it turns out this volume, this, this uh, value, volume, um, comes from k sub b. The electric constant k is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Epsilon zero, epsilon naught. It's kind of the same, same way of, uh, of expressing it. All right. So please move on to the second video: combinations of capacitors.